Welcome everyone. It's uh, really nice to and see so many of you here and so many still trickling in. Uh, also oh. very nice to see so many familiar faces and you know also so many new faces um, and so many new people connecting as well. So thanks a lot for joining us on Meet the Kalakars. Uh, before we begin, I just want to do a very quick programming plug. Uh, if, you're, if you're not a member of the Kalakars community, please become one. It's really simple. You have just got to subscribe to uh, our newsletter or join our uh, closed Facebook community page or like us on Instagram. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we like to keep it really simple to be able to appropriate as many people as we can. So do that, please do that. And um, now let's just uh, come back to why you're here. This is Meet the Kalakars and, uh, you know, we're so excited to be back to this programming with these two amazing directors, Tanuj Chopra and Nardeep Purmi. And, um, you know, I want to read out their bios just in case you don't already know about uh, all their brilliant work. So I'm just going to do that. Um, let's start with Tanuj. Tanuj is, Tan Chopra is the showrunner and director of Emmy award-winning series, Delhi Crime Season 2 on Netflix. Previously an indie filmmaker, Tanuj has written, directed, and produced four grand jury prize winning features, including his first, Punching at the Sun, which is a gritty movie about teens coming of age in post 9-11 Queens. This is a 16mm classic, uh, which was the first South Asian American film to premiere at Sundance. And now you can watch it on the Criterion Collection. His other award-winning titles include Chi and Tea, Grass, and Staycation, a totally improvised comedy feature about a crap relationship. And um, listen to this. He's directed, DP'd, and edited the no-budget feature film that won the 2018 Grand Jury Prize at the LA Film Festival. He's currently developing an American high school series adaptation of Sarath Chandra Chattopadhyay's novel, Dev Das, with superstar director Meera Menon set up at Searchlight. And he's also in post-production um, on a short documentary about Brown University's Dynamo point guard, Shaina Mehta, with support from the Center for Asian American Media. So really looking forward to hearing from Tanuj. Um, Nardeep Kurmi is also an award-winning writer, director, and actor, hailing from the suburbs of Philly by the way of Switzerland. His work spotlights underrepresented communities, and he's the winner, as we know, of the 2021 ATT Untold Stories program, the 2021 Fall Screencraft Film Fund, and Silver Award winner in Drama at the 2021 Page Screenwriting Awards. Land of Gold, which he wrote, directed, and starred in, is his debut feature. It premiered at the 2022 Tribeca Film Festival and will be streaming on HBO Max in 2023, and we're really waiting for that. Uh, there is so much to hear from them, but you know, before I hand it over to Nardeep, uh, just some housekeeping tips. You know, All of us have attended too many Zoom events to know that we should keep ourselves on mute. And we would love for you to, you know, stop your video right now um, so that it doesn't distract the speakers. Um, and especially, you know, when you're in places you don't want to be seen in. Uh, towards the end of the uh, interaction between Nardeep and, Kurmi, uh, Nardeep and Tanuj, we will ask you guys to open up uh, your videos. And, you know, if you have any questions, you could, um, you would be asked to uh, read them out. Uh, you know, what you could do right now is just type your questions out in the chat and we'll take them down and then Nardeep will toss it over to Tanuj with your name so you can switch your cameras on and ask uh, Tanuj the questions when we begin the Q&A. Um, I hope that's clear. If there are any questions, put it out in chat and, you know, also be a little chatty on the chat and let us know where you're joining in from or anything else that interests you during this conversation. It would be great to hear that. Um, that's it from me. I'm handing it over to Nardeep in anticipation for what this conversation brings. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today at this fantastic Colorcurs event. Uh, hey Tunage, nice to meet you. Nardeep, how's it going, man? 
I'm doing well, man. So look, uh, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and I'm sure there's probably some people on this, this, uh, this zoom right now that may not know your, your journey. So I think, um, we got a little bit of snippet in that bio, but I'd love if you could share a little bit of how you started and, you know, specifically how you got to punching at the sun and Sundance. Yeah. I mean, um, first of all, thank you color cards for having uh, me and Nardeep, um, and also congratulations, Nardeep. You've had a huge year with your, with your film at, at Tribeca, which we've been all watching and tracking, excited to see it in 2023. Um, <clears throat> I think like, you know, filmmaking has been, um, it started off for me as something that um, I always, I came in from a point of feeling like uh, my story wasn't being told. Uh, our communities were being represented very strangely and awkwardly in media. And um, early on, I just had the feeling like to change this, we had to take control of the image making. Um, and uh, early on just had this, you know, it, it's something that hit me as when I was fairly young and I threw myself into um, both studying it and um, making as much as I could, you know, and it started off with a short that I had um, done at, at, in college uh, in my senior year. And it was one of those things you just get obsessed about. And you, I, I missed my graduation because I was in the, I was in the basement of the, of the school, just editing this 10 minute thing, like trying to make every cut perfect, you know, and, who knew what would have become of it or anything, but it, it was this little black and white story about three um, friends who crashed their parents' car and they're scared to tell. You know, it's a very simple story and um, sent it off to the Los Angeles Asian American Film Festival, not even knowing what the festival circuit was or anything. And um, a few months later, I got that, you know, you've been accepted kind of thing. And I think that's what the that's where the bug started, and and that's where even the relationship with my relationship with Los Angeles Asian American Film Festival started, and realizing there was a place for our work. There was a there was a, a place where um, if you make something, it could land, you know. Um, so it gave me encouragement to keep, you know, just making the things that I, I was feeling. I went from there to um, India. Uh, someone, a, a, a nonprofit organization, asked me to shoot a documentary about. Um, girls in this orphanage in Patiala and, and I, I just was like all right I just went you know I was just taking whatever opportunities came I went out there and I heard these crazy you know stories of, of, of women being sort of how they got to this orphanage and, the, and the, actually quite tragic stories of, of how they landed there and, and then while I was out in India I got another job um, producing an arts and culture tv show in Delhi um, finally I had enough work um, kind of put together and um, enough of, enough to submit uh, uh, to uh, an application to Columbia University. I get a call while I'm in India. They're like, you know, we loved your materials. Come out. Um, you're, we're going to give you this big scholarship. Come, you got the Dean's Fellowship. Come to New York in 2001. I go out to New York and literally uh, like four days after I land, 9-11 happens. And, um, you know, it, it went from being this amazing opportunity to something where the world changed overnight. And um, I... I stuck with it. Uh, I experienced horrible things in the classroom. My teacher said, if I saw someone that looked like you on an airplane, I would turn around and walk off. Um, it, it was like a, a tough time to be um, brown in the city, but um, I, I was very fiercely, stubbornly independent and believing that, you know, our stories had, you know, I still just, it was that thing, representation, you know, it, it's, just, it's the thing everybody talks about today. And, um, while uh, I was taking classes, I started to volunteer at um, SIA, South Asian Youth Action in Queens. It's this uh, great nonprofit organization that serves um, the largest amount of South Asian teens in the country at the time. And um, we ran workshops, filmmaking workshops. We did um, a lot of activist workshops where, you know, kids would go to the city council and just ask, you know, where where is my father? Like, there's so many de deportations and detentions, so much, so much crazy stuff happening in the community at the time. and um, Finally, it, I had enough relationships with enough youth and um, we just decided to get together and tell our stories and um, kind of made this script an amalgamation of like my story, their stories. Um, got a couple grants, got a, gotten to Tribeca All Access. And we just got a barely enough encouragement to make this thing and went out there for 17 days um, while I was still in film school, not knowing what we were doing, just, just rattling off film. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you that I'm fast forwarding the story. Now. Just, I don't want to get, <laughs> get crazy about it, but it, you know, eventually the, the the film popped out. It took a year and a half to edit. Submitted it like this uh, to Sundance on yeah. a thing called a DVD. Oh yeah, um, I remember those. A, a 
blank DVD and we're coming just back, man. <laughs> punching at the sun. And um, I, I get a call from John Cooper a couple months later saying, we loved your film. Would you like to premiere it in Utah uh, at the Sundance Film Festival? And um, like the rest is kind of history. I fell to my knees, uh, ecstatic screaming, a filmmaker's dream. Um, I think I still, I had professors who hadn't, you know, done that. And yeah. it was kind of very validating after a, a long struggle in New York to, to get there. Yeah. You know, it's interesting what you're, you know, you've said a couple times there, this idea of encouragement, right? Like LA Asian Pacific Film Festival gave you that initial encouragement. And then the Columbia Letter of Acceptance gave you that encouragement. And then, you know, Sundance, like how important is that even now? I mean, like, you know, you're a superstar. You just show ran and directed Delhi Crime season two. It's a massive hit. And, you know, how important is that for you still as an experienced filmmaker who's done all of this stuff yeah. to have that encouragement there? That's a great question. I'm, I'm, uh, only a director is going to pick up on on that critical thing because all these things they add to your confidence. They add to your, um, you know, especially when you're operating from a group that's not being um, whose stories aren't being told in Hollywood. Like you need to hear it from somewhere to keep going. So um, I think it's like the, all the little pieces add up, uh, and and while you don't necessarily see it in real time, it it just all goes into building your armor, building your strength building your confidence um and even today yeah you know like uh i i've learned to rely less on on that kind of validation to be in touch with what i what my artistic goal is for sure but um oh man i mean i need to hear stuff is good all the time i need to hear, <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear. sometimes it's even worse you know you just need you know you need to hear um that you're still that your vision is still there um, Yo, that is that is so the truth. It doesn't matter how good the thing is. It doesn't matter like where you're at in your career. You just need people to be like, hey, good work. Just like, even if they don't love it, just like, it's like when you go to a theater and you've seen a play that you don't like, but you have friends in it and you're like, congratulations. And it's just like, yes, that's sometimes that's all you need to keep going. <laughs> yeah, just someone be like, hey, you're beautiful, you know. <laughs> um, well, so look, you, you, you show ran this big show, but I'm curious, right? You've been working in the indie space so much. And I feel like a lot of people on this Zoom are working in the indie space. You know, I am in the indie space as well. And uh, you've done like micro, micro budget features. You shot one by yourself because, you know, you had to do it. What has that transition been like for you going from like beg, borrow and steal style filmmaking to like, okay, here's Netflix, you know, here's some superstar actors and a huge ass budget you know, now run with it, you know? What's yeah, that I mean, well, it, 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 so, I mean, in a lot of ways, it was a good fit for me because um, Delhi Crime, sort of the language of the show requires a bit of an indie filmmaker sensibility. Mm -hmm. It requires a bit of grit. It's a handheld show. Um, yeah. Every trick you learn um, in the streets, making films um, about how to make your days, about how to, you know, be efficient with your shot and your coverage and um, kind of just like having good instincts. It all comes from sort of the indie film space, you know, but that being said, um, I also got into uh, the Fox Directors Lab, the Sony Directors Lab, HBO Directors Lab, and I was shadowing on a lot of TV shows too. So I had a good sort of basic level education transition into um, television space as it, as it was. Yeah. Um, the, it, you know, strangely enough, it's very hard to actually get a job directing an American TV show, but um, you know, it turned out my first job was actually show running and directing um, a, a, an Indian show. I had to go over there to get, that's how, that's how fun the, the system is. <laughs> so, so he, take away for this, for this guys is just, you know, just go to the top right away. You don't, don't worry about working your way up. Um, <laughs> I mean, this might be actually, this is actually a question I have, right? So like I got to make my first feature through a grant program, um, the untold stories program, which is like, you know, it's a, it's a diversity and equity program that's meant to put our stories out on screen. And you just mentioned you did a lot of these TV um, directing uh, fellowships. Did those, I mean, those, it seems like taught you like, or gave you experience with how to be on like a television set and that monster of what that means. But did it prepare, did, did, was there, were there other ways that it prepared you to jump into the sort of big seat, the big chair, um, where you're managing expectations of a, of like the executives and, and then, you know, your crew and your cast and the edits and everything? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of those labs really discussed, you really understood TV making as a collaborative process and, and as something that, you know, it's not your show, it's not your director, you are a hired person to bring your skills onto this, onto a project. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, you have to very much respect your writers, your executives, your showrunners. Like a lot of people have opinions that need to be serviced. And I mm -hmm. think these labs helped me transition from being in a situation where it's your film, it's an indie film, and you're everything you says go, everybody's like serving your vision to something that you are executing, you are interpreting a script and using your um, abilities to bring out the best that the scene has, but it's it's not, it's, it's more important to serve the vision of the show, the, 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 the it's a language that's already been established with the show. It's, yeah. it's, it's not your place to necessarily like turn a, uh, you know, still stay, a, steady cam a full steady cam show into something that's um you know uh handheld and backwards you know and right. so it, it, it's 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 it, it takes in a way it, it, it requires more skill um yeah. than than pure heart now Delhi crime just happens to be something that you know also requires me to put my whole soul into as well so yeah. it, in a way it was the combination of like keeping the language of the show alive that was established in season one um, adding to it, but also um, it's never going to work unless um, it has a heart as well. So yeah. um, it, 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 it was a lot of things that came together. Yeah. So what you're saying is, so that's something I'm very interested in. So, you know, I, I had watched the first season, I've watched the second season. And the thing that's interesting is your vibe, you know, like, I don't know you personally, but having been so familiar with your work, um, I know you're like, I feel like I know a little bit of what your soul is right through your work. And that was definitely in season two, but you were picking up off of someone else's show. So jumping in as the showrunner and, you know, directing all the episodes with a cast that was already established, how did you approach the material to get your soul in there while retaining everything that, you know, got them a season two to begin with? Yeah, no, I mean, I, great question. And um, I'm glad you picked up on that because, um, you know, season one, I think, they had made a really crazy crime. Richie had made this crime. Everyone came to understand this crime, but then they fell in love with the characters. Yeah. Um, season two, they were coming back for the characters and they sort of learned about the crime as we went. And that was a, that works with me so well because I love actors. Uh, actors, I do this for actors. I do this for my actors to shine. Um, the more people talk about Shefali Shah, Rajesh Talang, Tulota Mashom, uh, Rasika Dougal, Anurag Arora, the more people talk about them, I know my, I know I'm done my job. And, um, these are people I love putting a camera on. I love putting the emphasis on. And I think if you feel a difference, that's probably it, is that um, I, I really wrote my actors' instincts and tried to just um, put them in the best position to shine, not control them, not micromanage them, micromanage them. Really, really show the world um, how, how strong a cast we had. Um, and yeah, I, I tend to center people. I tend to center humans, um, heart, you know, emotional relationships. And so... Um, I, I think that that might be part of what's being felt in the in the in the new season. I, I think I hope it's hard for me to evaluate it all. You know, <laughs> um, also you know, cinematography is a big. I, I do shoot some of my my work. Yeah. I have shot some of my features. So collaborating with David Boland, who is just a, a genius director of photography, I, I already had it. I knew how to put him in the best positions to to win. You know, what shots give him the most depth. Where to stay. How to stage action so he's going to win with the image as well. So. Um, and and he brought so much to the table in, in, in that regard. So it, it it's 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 those are my values when I when I work is really first making sure my actors know what they're doing and 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 know what's happening and, and their blocking makes sense to them. And then secondly is making sure you know my, my cinematographer is always in a position to get a great image. Um, I just getting a good shot is really important to me. Yeah, I mean I think you carried over what you did in your indie work um, to the show so beautifully, like. You, it is you you love your actors right you you love like holding on a long take you love seeing their performance run through the through the frame and I think you brought that energy to Delhi crime and it, it, it's exactly what it is it's like we love these characters and you just gave us more of what we loved but injected it with your soul and you know you, your films are so American I mean, you've, you know, you've done like indie American what it is to be an American kind of stuff and then you've done stoner comedies so like what was that? And now you're doing now. And Delhi Crime is like hard boiled, like <laughs> detective, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. So, what is that? How did you make that transition genre wise in your own head? You know, when your own writing and the stuff that you've been creating has been so different to that. Um, and then, kind of going all, you know, adding to that, how different was it working in India than it would be here in America, especially with your experience in TV and in features? Oh, I mean, yeah, I, sometimes I don't even know about 
how I do this range thing. I have a really weird range for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's impressive. Uh, it's really wild. I think, um, I, you know, it's fair to note that I did do a film called Butterfly, a short film, my first uh, short yeah. film in, um, while I was at Columbia. Uh, yeah. It was a 23 minute film with Adil Hussein and uh, Talotha Mashom, their first film after Monsoon Wedding and Adil was just yeah. out of NSD. So I'd had actually that base of working in India and I'd done about two more feet, uh, short films with Talotha. So working with Talotha was already something, she's one of my actors I love, you know, and I was, yeah. in, and I was able to kind of, fit her into the show and keep our collaboration alive which is like that that's the ultimate joy you know I think in terms of like getting over the crime genre I mean I'd done a few horror films too I'd done a few um uh, dramas that had you know short dramas that had some intensity a film called Clap Clap I shot after yeah. uh, Punching at the Sun with Sung yeah. Kang and Talotha Mashom and it, it had a gritty kind of street Chinatown crime vibe to it but the big transition for me wasn't so much being able to nail a style or a look or a feel for the crime. It was the writing. It was to learn how does a crime procedural work? Mm -hmm. You know, um, crime, crime procedurals have a very specific language to it and events have to happen a certain way. Police procedure unfolds a certain way. It requires a lot of research. It requires a lot of, you know, door knocking, opening doors, clues, you know, like clues leading to clues leading to clues. Um, that was something like you kind of know these things instinctively, but um, I had to get into the room and work with my writers and yeah. decode the show and educate myself actually you know quite a bit how, how, how do crime procedurals run it just so happens like my, one of my favorite movies in the world is heat um oh, but <laughs> you know my michael man and um i think maybe i'm just trying to make heat with everything i do i'm either <laughs> trying to make heat or or fallen angels you know but Love um it. uh i i think i you know I, but even even a lot of one car wise films you watch you you see he's he does so many genres, but it's always like kind of the same story at the heart of it. But he does yeah. these crime shows, you know. So seeing directors like that make you know love stories, crimes like you just you realize the medium's flexible. It's clay. You know, you have to you have to be flexible um, yeah. with the medium. In terms of working in India, you know, um, I felt that was pretty seamless too. I have I had a really great um, line producer, uh, uh, Vicky Vijay and Yamini Pictures. And um, they made me feel right at home. In fact, if anything, directing out there um, is way more free. It's way more liberating. Um, I, I was always very supported. I, I had a lot of um, uh, director's assistants. I had um, a lot of uh, crew that was able to do things that you wouldn't be able to do out here. There, there's a lot of there's a lot less restrictions. Um, I, 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 you know, if it ever rained, there was someone with an umbrella over me. I don't know if that's an important story, but, <laughs> but um, I, I found working out there awesome. And I'm actually worried about coming back and working here. I think I'm so spoiled. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a tantrum and be a demanding director and get fired. Uh, whereas in yep. India, they, they listen to me. <laughs> Dude, own that shit. Um, okay. Well, so, if, so that, I mean, that's really kind of uplifting because, you know, you never know when you're working in one system and working internationally, you know, there's that trepidation of like oh how do you fit into their system how do they like to work because it is different you know um with season two what was that process like when you got hired like what how did they bring the project to you and then you know traditionally in American television there's a showrunner and the director's not doing it like even with True Detective where you know Carrie Fukunaga directed the whole season there was still a showrunner and a head writer on it right um so like how did that work with you and your writers and did, was it a, like, did you come up with a story collectively? Did you come in with this, like, broad thing? And then you were like, okay, let's break this down now. Like, what was that process like? Because it's a little bit different than how we do it here in the States. Definitely. I mean, again, you know, even even in the States, there's not, there's, there's not necessarily any rules, you know. It, it sort of depends on how, what kind of, how, how you enter the show, sort of whose idea it is and, and contractually where things stand. But, I mean, I got the job because of all this indie work you know it, it, the yeah. producers had seen my work for this for the longest time and i think it was punching at the sun more than anything like they knew i could handle a really to the street gritty um urban sort of uh, th a show and it went to sundance and this show went to Sundance. there was just like a natural synergy uh richie and i had also been making parallel work for so long so it just it kind of made sense um i had to interview a bunch and and, and go through a few hoops but with what I was jumping into was a show that already had a premise pitched and um, mm. already had a crime pitch. So, um, you know, Rich, Richie couldn't take the show forward. So I'd take um, the, the kind of pieces that the very few thin pieces that were there mm. and turn it into a crime. The good thing was I also had a room full of writers. I had uh, Mayank Tiwari, I had Shiva Swarup, I had Vidit Tripathi and I had uh, Toshin. 
um, and who was our writer's room assistant. And, um, you know, it was really important for me to, when I got there to make sure the show um, had the voices of the Indian writers who were hired for it. You know, I, 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 I wasn't writing any episodes specifically, but I was shepherding the overall vision and sort of um, making sure the story, um, you know, along with my executive producers, just made sure the story was gripping and moved and, um, you know, managed the scripts as they kind of came in, um, gave a lot of notes. Um, but I would also, uh, we would have to, we had to kind of take the pieces of the crime that we had, do a ton of research um, around where these crimes, you know, how these crimes happened in the 90s and what they meant today, go to the communities that um, were impacted by these crimes, um, talk to victims, talk to survivors, talk to um, uh, police, uh, we, we talked to a lot of DNTs, um, we talked to PhD, we talked to everybody, you know, and then when we had enough data, uh, you know, hard materials for the show, this show is very research based, we were able to kind of yeah. then work in um, some of a true crime uh, incidents that we learned about and amalgamate them into a story that turned into, um, you know, I think it turned into maybe like, maybe not a fully, not, not a fully true crime, but it, uh, it was a crime that reached a higher truth through fiction. Yeah. Um, and yeah. What um, I'm just like berating you with questions now. I mean, I guess that's what this is. So like, you know, I'm 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 getting ready to pitch a TV show myself. Oh no, you're muted, man. I hope I'm answering them. I hope that wasn't that I wasn't muted for long. No, no, no. You just got <laughs> muted when I started rambling. Um, here, here's so here's a question, right? You know, for a lot of young filmmakers who are transitioning from different thing to different thing, what were some of the challenges that were kind of similar to this work you had already done, and what were what was different um, when you started doing Delhi Crime? Um, well, you know, the challenges, the filmmaking challenges are are always unique for every project, um, yeah. and um, some of the same things that you experience on the small films, it, they're just always there. Whether it's you know making your day, time, fatigue, resources, like those things, you know, you get a little bit, you get maybe a little bit more breathing room, um, um, but you still have to be very scrappy, um, even in any television environment, you know. I think the good thing you have when you move up to this level is there's a lot of um, producerial help. Um, I'm not doing, you know, uh, any logistical producing at all on any level. <laughs> Thank oh my God. God, what a godsend. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. that alone, um, you know, allows you to be a bit more of a brat. Um, <laughs> also, you know, I, I have to deal with network notes. I have to deal with uh, executive notes. Um, and um those are important to listen to, know how to feel, know how to take the things that really improve the show, know how to like get your point across if there's something that's misunderstood, you know. Um, there's a lot more dialogue and um, testing and, and cross-checking that goes into the scripting process before you get out there than maybe you're used to. There's things like as an indie filmmaker, you know, oh yeah, I'll solve that when I'm on set. Or I know, I know how that'll come together, but and yeah, you'll still that. probably do it in real oh, time really? when you get there. But you have to also go through a process of kind of presenting your ideas and defending your ideas um, um, beforehand. So, um, which is good. It, it sharpens you as a filmmaker. It's not always fun. You know, you, sometimes you're just like, let me direct. I, I can do it, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, there, there's, there's, it's more than me out there. You know, what's that? So, okay. So then, like, what was a normal week like for you maybe not a week maybe what, like what was like your schedule like for an episode you know I think about the Nick that Steven Soderbergh he directed he shot he edited it all right and um yeah. he had like his production Pers diary the crazy personal thing. hero <laughs> right exactly yeah I mean that dude uh he's insane and life goals but it seems like you're doing basically what he did on the Nick in many ways and you know I'm curious as to what was your um what was kind of your schedule when you were directing every episode and show running it? So like, was the writer's room finished by the time you went to production? Was it happening while you were in production? You know, how did you manage all of those elements as showrunner and then being on set as a director? Yeah, I mean, the the, the showrunner side really was was getting the scripts ready and, and being in the and being ready to shoot. And then also setting the the world you know um, yeah. building our police station what's our main color costumes choosing actors like all of those hot, big overall choices came from the showrunner brain you know and there was a lot of there were, you know, weeks of prep that went into just 
getting the um, the the world up and running. Um, and then the directing, you know, you kind of switch hats, you get into directing mode. Now I was I was block shooting up to four episodes sometimes um, sure. at a time. Um, so you know, it, it it I did rely a lot on my ads to kind of um, keep me on track with the story. Um, and, and, and you, you just kind of have to go into a different kind of more technical, um, yeah. sort of, uh, uh, delivering brain, you know, where you, you just have to land your scenes, land your scenes, nail your scenes yeah. and not think too much about the big picture, but you've are, but at that point, you know, I've already, I've lived in this world so long that it's a, it's a bit second nature for me. It's, it, it, it's very available to me. Uh, yeah. the story is very available to me and what has to happen in these scenes very available to me. Um, and it, that comes from the indie work that comes from so much, you know, um, managing twice as much in, in a way as an indie filmmaker and having that like that kind of a, a brain that holds it all. Um, I think we got st we also got caught up in the pandemic. So we had to stop production um, halfway through our shoot. So I had to go back into showrunner mode, edit what we'd had, um, take more notes about what we'd had, adjust the script again, you know, based on. Yeah. we had so much time you know and and, and i you know it, it it was just like another crazy thing to hold together and then we had to go back out and then also you know reshoot um everything we missed um a year later you know um yeah. and fortunately um it was able to kind of stitch together and work but again this wow. is all indie filmmaking grit this is yeah. this is all i don't you know the funny thing is as um high profile show as Daily Crime is, I just don't think like a very seasoned um, TV, like someone who's very comfortable in shooting, you know, a single episode of television who's shot like 20, 50 episodes of TV. It, this is a very, this is not that situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I bring the Soderbergh up in terms of doing the Nick, right? Uh, for those of you who don't know what block shooting is, that's basically where you take one location and you shoot every scene out that's in that location uh, for either the episode or, as you said, four episodes. That's uh, that's insane that you had to keep track of all that stuff. Um, I guess it helped. It, I mean, yeah, the only way you could do it is if you were show running it because you're the only one that knows start to finish where the arcs are going and what what's building off. And like, we have to get that close up because that's going to be key for later. Um, that's crazy. And kudos to you for keeping that. Again, like we talked about that soul. You're like, you know, your identity through that whole thing and like infusing these performances with so much beauty and warmth. Um, totally. And another, another thing I'd like to add too is just the ed having editors. I had three editors on the show. And because we'd gone through a bit of editing, like they were also able to give me like forward looking suggestions as well. And I can't, I can't stress that enough is, is not only to rely on your actors, but rely on your editor. Your editors are your best friends and you need to listen to them, be in conversation with them before you shoot. And they can really help you pick up a few shots that you might not realize you need until you get there. Totally. Let me just take one second. Hey guys, if you have any questions, please start putting them in the chat uh, so we can uh, get to them uh, in a little bit. Um, man, I'm so I'm so like flabbergasted by that schedule that you kind of want, you know, and um, this is kind of a little pivot, but I think this is really important. We don't talk about it enough in our industry, but like work-life balance. So how did you handle your work-life balance doing the show? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> well, this is like literally the coolest interview I've had, man. Um, and you know, Deep, you're just you, you're great, brother. I really appreciate you. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I, I've been, I'm, I, just I didn't, didn't have a work for a week for, for a year, so I get like you're doing this for a show, man. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot. No, I mean, and look, there is no work life balance. Like, um, to keep it a hundred, like you have to make to do something like this, you make sacrifices, man. It's 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 not for everybody. Um, you know, I can get into like the tragedy of my <laughs> personal life, you know, the, which is actually, it, it, which just isn't one. I mean, I'm married to Delhi Crime. Um, I had to basically work, work, I worked every day. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't yeah. like days off. There was, a, there was a few periods where I got to kind of like put my feet up and unwind while there was nothing going on, you know, in the pandemic or, um, or what have you. But I mean, part of it is just living between countries. Like I, I, I am the record holder of nights stayed in Soho House Bombay for the last three years. I, they, they should put a little <laughs> plaque up of it. And it sounds really cool at first, you know, you're at this little boutique hotel overlooking the Arabian Sea, you know, uh, a, a year in, you're ready to jump off the damn balcony and see what happens just to, <laughs> to shake it up. Yeah, um, and the pandemic didn't make it easier, you know, at all. But um, I have a very like supportive family. Um, my, 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 I, I had to get rid of my apartment in LA and, and just sort of move my stuff back to my parents. I just made no sense to keep my place. Yeah. Um, and I'm just very lucky, um, you know, I would come home and spend a lot of quality time with, with my family and spend yeah. time in the city I grew up in and just, just um, 
you know, you, ha- you try do things like meditation, self care, a lot of a lot of yoga, massage, like lying down on massage balls. You know, like you just have to keep caring for yourself, eating, eat well, sleep, get your sleep in. Like you just have to kind of do those things, and yeah. that's I don't know if that's work life balance. I think it's just like self care, so you can go back to work. Um, yeah, and man, now hopefully the balance. Yeah, it's just taking care of yourself, so you have the energy to go back and do that high level work that you're doing. Um, you do, you got to do what you got to do. So you're, you know, when you're staying in a box, like you said, looking over the sea, uh, you know, that box gets smaller and smaller every time you go into it. Sorry, I, I interrupted, but I just, that, no. I feel like that's just something we like, everyone needs to know is like, you know, there are sacrifices that are need to be made to, to work on this, but it's important to remember to take care of yourself through that. Um, cause you got to take care of your mental. Otherwise you can't put in the work. It's the, it's the only way. And I think you learn it as you go, as you stay in this field, like, when you start off, maybe you're in your twenties and you can, you know, stay up for three days straight off of like eating rocks and Jim, Jim Beam. I don't know what the, I don't know how we live in our twenties. We're crazy humans and, yeah. and fine. That's okay for your first, for your first films. But, um, this requires, you know, 12 hour days, sometimes 14 hour days, whatever it takes. We didn't go, we didn't have like anything that went ridiculous in terms of time, but it requires, um way more focus and concentration sleep is like is your best friend and you need to you need to learn how to how to um treat your mind and body in a way that it gives it gives you back the most you know yeah Uh, and i feel that um before we turn it over to some of the audience members i got one last question for you you know uh i feel like a big challenge as a director is is always the follow-up right you know, trying to figure out what's going to get you jazzed because you get exhausted, you get burned out doing a project, yeah. you're living with it for, for years. And then it's like, okay, well, what the hell next? And how do you rejuvenate yourself and fill that tank up of inspiration to get onto the next thing? So, you know, not like, you know, we, what are you excited about now that, that this shows out, you're still on the publicity circuit with it. Like, what are you like, what, what's exciting you right now? Well, I mean, I think you picked up on the, I mean, you have to, if it doesn't, if you don't find something that truly, truly excites you, it's going to be hard to sustain it, you know. Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, Mira and I have been working, Mira Menden and I have been working on our show, uh, Dave Thus. It's an adaptation of Dave Thus for, um, it's set in a in a Texas high school with three teenagers. And um, we are so gassed about it. We had a meeting on it yesterday and it, it, it just gets better and better. And it's been a nice, long, slow development process that's been able to happen in parallel. And um, she's just such a fabulous director and yeah. such a fabulous thinker and always makes me feel like, <laughs> she's, I like, put out ideas and she's like, here's how to make it better. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm an idiot. And, um, and it's, just, it's just a chance to maybe make this like beautiful glowing little show about three, a drama, you know, about three brown teenagers. Yeah. I mean, that's a beautiful uh, opportunity. I love things like, you know, fatal love, tragic love. I love, um, tr- you know, subversive topics, transgressive topics. I love things that are like, that have, um, that explore, you know, our, our, our nature, our, our, our intimate nature, romantic nature, sexual nature. I just love things that kind of um, get at uh, the core of human experience. And so I look for, I look for shows like that. I look for ideas like that. Um, Delhi Crime Season Three is, is something that I'm sure is in conversation with, um, and you know, is, it would be another thing to come back to. And nice to do something where I could just, you know, I can pick the crime from the beginning and and and, and um, you know, enter it that way. And 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 also actors, you know, I, I get it's like, who do you want to work with? That's sometimes the 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 most inspirational question for me. Like coming back with the yeah. with the Shafali Shah Rajesh Talang, these people, like, I mean, to get the most out of them is uh, a very, very rewarding challenge for a director. It's very um, motivating. Like, I'm like, I don't care what the script is. Like, let me just have them and we'll figure it out. You know, we've, we've, we've I've done enough improv and enough um, off the cuff filmmaking that, um, you know, you real, you learn the material is important, but your DP and, and actors like are very, very important. You know. totally man well hey i'm manifesting season three for you if you want it and um, <laughs> mira has become a friend of mine over the last year so uh this is exciting a uh, dave yes. das high school adaptation in texas like i have so many questions about how you're gonna how you guys are adapting it because i love that i love that book and um that's really 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 exciting um so hey guys uh you know i i uh let's invite you guys on to screen if you guys want to turn your cameras on keep your microphones off 
if you can. And uh, uh, excuse me while I butcher your names as I call on you to ask your question uh, and your questions. But um, I think it'd be nice so you guys can all, we can see who you all are. So um, yeah, I see you all are turning your cameras on. Hey, look at all these beautiful people. Um, so let's start with uh, Pranav Dev. Thank you so much, guys, for doing this. First off, I know Deep, I know Nardeep and I have been Instagram buddies virtually. So, I, <laughs> yeah. and I'm an actor, and I'm I'm very excited about Dave. Da Dave Das is one of my favorite films. Uh, for high school kids, I don't know how you do the whole "Gone Gum Bakht Bardas Karni Ko Pita Hai Hum Ko Pite Hai Tum Ko Dek Sakte Tum Ko Bardas." So that should be fun to see in a high school realm, and uh, that. It's, that's super awesome. I'm super excited. And I, what I wanted to know was, I'm someone that's bilingual. As you can hear, I have, I do have an accent when I speak in Hindi and Roman, but when I speak in Hindi without a Hindi and Urdu, like when it's written in Devnagri, then my accent to chala jata. I, and I do have a problem that soch ke baat karta hun jab main Hindi mein baat. So it's like that sort of thing. So when you have those for actors like someone uh, like myself who memorizes his lines and gets everything, but then you face an actor maybe because your films have so much, maybe it's Gurmukhi, maybe it's um, maybe it's Hindi, maybe it's Urdu, maybe it's, so when you're, it's English, uh, when you're auditioning or when you're looking at actors, how, how much of it is like, if you're working with a chef Ali Shah, who ha will ha obviously have better Hindi than, someone like me or, or or a Justin Long or whoever the actor is that she's facing how much how much do you leave to scripting and how much do you leave to improvisation because at the end of the day that improvisation you know the languages have to meet and the and the uh what we think of as as something in in Hindi may be different from that same word in English so like how how, how do those how do the actors how how can they be natural and at the same time um, they, uh, they, they're speaking the same language. I mean, you, you know, it's one of those things where, look, they did a season of the show before me, so they know their characters in, in a way, sometimes even more than me. Um, they'll always ask me, can I say, um, can I say it this way? And, and, and they'll audition it for me. And, um, it, as long as it's not messing up my story, my main story, um, I, I want to encourage them. I want to give them that space. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, I'll always get a safe take, you know, with with the words as scripted for the most part. But nine times out of ten, the suggestion is is it improves the story, improves the script, improves the moment because it's theirs. They own it and it's natural. And I encourage that. I want that for my actors. If it doesn't work, you know, I have an editor. I just I, I can I, I just edit it out. Um, it's better to give an actor an opportunity to try it on set and fail. Um, than it is to like block creativity in that moment for me. Right. Um, okay. And, you know, generally, uh, there is the politic of language is always there. Like, is, is, if you're working in Netflix, India versus working, it just depends where you're working and who's who's right. the show for. Um, quite frankly, you know, the, uh, Delhi Crime needs to be a Hindi show. And, and pro we, we probably put a little more English in than we need to at times. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, I, I, but the point is, ultimately... I'm and the English is to reach the audience is basically where, is that more, I think it's or is that more of a creativity? It's more, it's creative too. Like, you know, yeah. it, since yeah. it shows so much about class, certain conversations in this right. world are in English um, and then certain conversations are in Hindi, you know, and it just depends on who's speaking to who. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And coming from the actor's perspective, I think it's always smart to be able to improvise on set because sometimes directors are really like generous and say let's just let's play with it so you got to be prepared for that and sometimes they're like st stick to the script that we're just doing the script so being able to be malleable like that is always a great weapon to have of course, yeah. um, when you're working on set um and, and do you have that language right before do you say like this this uh scene has to be in english or this scene has to be in hindi and then you go go from there uh we don't i don't go that i mean it, it, they already have the script so if it's scripted in hindi it's going to be it's going to be Hindi. I don't have that, yeah, it's not that you don't have that translation, uh, the error in translation, I guess. Yeah, but it, it, if you know, Sh Shafali is a character. Uh, Varthik is a character who goes between languages, so, so I do have to monitor, you yeah. know, who she's speaking to and when she's speaking it. And 
you know, any, and sometimes it's, in, it's not right, but it's right for the audience. It's right for the experience. And that's the liberty I take with the show. Yeah, um, of course. But, Cause um, you're the, yeah, you're the, you steer the ship at the end of the day. So, well, or they, <laughs> yeah. Or well, they, you see, you know, steer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah, let's, let's, but, Hey, thanks yeah, for that, man. We're gonna oh, get I'd love to work with you guys and uh, hope to audition for you guys or in any capacity. And thank you guys for doing this. For sure, Appreciate buddy. it, man. Um, Sangeeta, come on up. Hi, I'm so glad I decided to join today. What a fantastic discussion this is. I've just finished watching um, season two, absolutely loved it, binged. Uh -huh. and, and I wrote to Tanuj and I, I'm just so excited that uh, such this kind of, this level of content is coming out of India. I think that's exciting. Uh, just to add to that language thing, I think you need, um, the language in India defines classes. So that's the other big distinction that the minute a character is speaking English a certain way, it puts them in a certain class. So, you know, maybe that's uh, why sometimes you need to use it. My question to you, Tanoj, how did um, the Indian people, the entire filmmaking community react to this young American speaking with American accent coming on board? And now, you know, it's just, I mean, you're kind of probably different than anything else that anyone else that they have dealt with before. Uh, so how was that experience? Yeah, I don't know. Look, you know, um, I don't know fully the answer to the question. I think um, I treat everybody with a lot of love, compassion, respect. And I think that translates the most, um, especially when I'm with my key collaborators, key circle. Um, I think they respect that I'm bringing a, an insider outsider perspective and the show was made that way. You know, let's not forget Richie's not from India either. So um, it's not like I'm breaking the mold of the show per se, um, but, um, you know, I, I think they're just like, he's so handsome. We, we just have to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I really don't know. Um, I think, I think, look, I've gone to India every summer of my life. I'm, I'm very comfortable in India. My cousins are there. I know, I know Delhi and Bombay inside. I know Bomb I know Delhi better than a lot of people that I work with on the show in a lot of ways. So um, I don't feel so um, outsidery over there. India's, the, the, it's very, you know, the, the filmmaking culture, the, the youth culture there is very modern, advanced. They've seen people like me come in and out of the country making films all the time. So um, I, I'm not that weird. And um, I think ultimately um, maybe I just have to lie to myself <laughs> and, and go through it. But but for the most part, we, it, it was all, it was just a lot of love, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah. Thanks, Sankita. Um Rickon, uh, you've got a couple questions here, so can you consolidate into one? And I think both Tanuj and I can speak to this, um, but yeah. Yeah, um, well, the other one's just specifically about like your day of that story, which I'm sure everybody in this room is like, well, how are you gonna do that? But I'll, I'm, you can probably speak to that more specifically, but the question that I had, like, I right, look at you guys is like super inspirational for me because both of you have careers that like, I'm hoping, you know, I can emulate like, you know, a few years, like 10 years down the line kind of thing like that. So yeah, it was my big question is like, you know, these, you guys talk about these labs and like these untold stories, these diversity labs. And I mean, I've shot like a few shorts myself, nothing like crazy, just like skeleton crew, a couple friends and some handhelds. Um, but like, what, what was like your process, right? Did you did you have to like submit writing samples, submit your own shorts that you've done? You know, anything that you can speak of that would just kind of give me an idea, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I can speak for my, my experience in these labs. I mean, I got into my first directing lab after doing four features. Two of them were super micro budget. One, I had um, uh, a grant from the Asian American Film Festival of Los Angeles that allowed me to make it a little bit bigger and um, I think the key with that, with these films that I'd done is that I'd work with actors who, um, you know, sort of had done a little bit of TV as well, or were, you know, in that space. Um, and part of what helps you get in is, is not just, um, you know, just the, the kind of short stories you, you want to tell us, like, can you show them can you show these labs that you can work with actors? I mean, TV is ultimately working with actors. You know, you really have, your job as a director in, in, on a TV show is, is making sure your actors are happy, they know what they're doing and that they look right. And I think that 
Um, that kind of work is the work that really helped me get into the labs more so than say, even Punching at the Sun, which went to Sundance and, and Tribeca and, and has this prestige factor to it. I think just showing them I could work like, Chi and T is a film I did. It starred Sunkrish Bala, Asif Ali, Dominic Reigns, uh, Noreen DeWolf, uh, Rebecca Hazelwood. Um, these are people who do star in a lot of TV shows. So um, I think that's how, that's how directing labs really work for me. Writing labs is, is, is very different. It's, it's strictly what you do on the page and your content and, and whether you can follow the format of a, of a TV show, a half hour show or a feature length show. Is your writing grabby? Does it, can you, will, can I open the page and will I just keep turning pages? You know, you only have about five to seven pages to hook your reader if you're lucky. So you have to make sure you have a really, you know, catchy writing sample. I don't know, Nardeep, you, you might have another um, yeah. thought I mean, because. <laughs> I mean, I think what you said there is important. You made four features before you got into a lab, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's the key, right? So I'm similar. I've been making shorts and content for 15 years until I got into untold stories. And I think the reality is these diversity and equity programs are great and they're there and they exist, but you can't rely on that and you shouldn't rely on that and you shouldn't make that your goal to be like I'm going to get Sundance Lab and and like fuck, I'm 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 off to the races. Like that's just not the the case and that's not the case for many Sundance Lab folks, right? I think using those labs if you can is great but I think the thing to remember is while you're pursuing this stuff is make sure that you're working on stuff that's just important to you and it's got your soul and it's got your vibe in it and I know you hear that all the time but when you're applying to these labs whether it's untold stories which it's like a budget and a script and a short or Sundance lab which is just a you know your first draft of your script usually or or the nickel fellowship which is you're never touching it again this ship script is done that's what they really want to see Yes, the writing, they want to hook you, but they want to see you on paper. And yeah. I think that um, the labs can be very, very helpful. And I think we're both um, very fortunate to have gone through some of these programs. But, um, you know, <laughs> it took both of us a long time. To, I mean, you know, Thunders made four features on his own before he got considered for the directing workshops at these places. Um, you know, yeah, and I've been just jump, doing, those yeah. labs didn't even exist at that at that at that point, yeah. too. And, and I'll say, yeah. I just want to just, no, this is an important point. I just want to say like, I, like I did, yes, I even did a Sundance. Dave Das has gone to the Sundance lab. Uh, uh, the um, All these directing labs I've done, th these aren't the things that got me my, the, the, this job, you know, ultimately. Yeah. Um, it, I still had to, I still had, it was still just the work that I was early, I was passionate about um, at the early stages that connected with the producers, you know. Um, that, that's really important to, to know that this, these labs can't be your destination. Like they, yeah. quite frankly, they they can hurt, they're, they're, they take time away from you. They can be very distracting that, you know, you can build a network, but it's, it's, it's not, it's not, a, it's not always a win. You know, the win is making a complete piece of work that you can love and stand behind your souls in it. Like not deep saying. Yeah, totally. I agree with that. Let the labs be something tangential. That's like in addition to, but don't let that be like the reach goal of getting into one of the labs. Cause <laughs> as I can attest, it's just going to make you sad. Um, it, you know, it, 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 it'll never fulfill the promise of what you think it's going to be. Um, but it, it's also like, it's going to, it could prevent you from continuing to create and the creation as Tanya said is that's the creation is what's going to get people excited. Um, not just that you've got like X, Y, Z on your resume, you know? Um, all right, let's go to, uh, 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 oh my God, I'm getting overloaded. Uh, uh, Asheka, am I saying your name right? Um, you've got two questions here. Can you ask one of them, please? Yes. Hi, I'm Asheka. Um, uh, so nice to meet you guys. Um, okay, pick a question, pick one. Um, what, okay, yeah, I'm gonna ask the first one. What's your favorite thing on TV, in theater, or on theater now that you either just love or would recommend? Um, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna start with that. Delhi Crime season two <laughs> okay. on Netflix. Uh, go check it out. What are you doing here? Go watch it. <laughs> okay. Great. I mean, my answer might be similar only because that's like all I've watched for the last two years of my life. But um, yeah. um, you know what? I saw the new I saw the new Batman on the airplane home, and I quite loved it. I thought it was fantastic. This is gonna be controversial, right? Can I talk about Batman? <laughs> Who, low art 
No, but, it's not. It's not low art. It's just you and I are going to have words afterwards about it. 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 I mean, it's a. It's a beautiful crime procedural. Very slow yeah. burn. Uh, I. I. Um. I. I really. I really loved it. Um, also, David Lowry's read uh, Green Knight. Green Knight. Mm-hmm. Guys, I thought that was. Uh, like you know, t- first 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, oh god, what are we doing? And then um, David Lowry, he's just a very creative. He just started making creative choice after creative choice after creative choice, and it became um, a really uh, soulful experience for me. Yeah, I would say um, film-wise, I think everything, everywhere, all at once was just. Oh like, yeah, I see that. I mean that thing. Like I, I, it's also impressive. Like I don't know if you're the same man, but like when you see something that you're like, I'm never gonna make that. <laughs> you like get jealous. You're like, oh. Yeah, uh, I should make that like that movie. I man. felt that way about Gungo by a little bit, to be honest. Yeah. 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 I feel that. I feel that. Um, all right. Let's grab another question on here. Sirage. White Lotus. I saw White Lotus. Yeah. Oh, White Lotus. That White Lotus was dope, man. Oh, um, Sirage, uh, can you ask one of your questions, please? Okay. Hey, I think you have, uh, um, Tanuj, you have partially answered it. Um, I had uh, a pleasure of working with Richie and seeing his first movie here in festival a few years ago. And he remembered me and he hired me for a small role for an Apple show. Um, and then I had another opportunity of uh, working with Raj um, uh, from Colombia, uh, Raj Sahani. Um, he also did a project in Mumbai with uh, Anupam K. So, but the talking to these people, there are small, small things happens in India which either bothers you or like your umbrella story. And you know, you feel good that there's somebody is there. Um, so tell us a few experiences you had, um, which either you loved it or you, you know, you, you wish it wasn't there. Um, In terms of shooting specifically? Yeah, the, the logistics and, and the people and, 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 and the chaos and this beauty. Yeah. And color. Well, one, and you know, one, thing of, one thing I love, I love, but was also chaotic. And I can't even call it chaotic because I loved it so much was the, you know, the fact that if I want 400 extras tomorrow in India, that's nothing. Nobody blacks an eyelash. Nobody blinks. My ADs are like, oh, that's it. Okay, cool. And I'll come on to set and I'll have 500 extras in the background, all being managed by AD. There's no shortage of humans in India. You know, we, we might not have everything else in that you would want on a film set, but you you can get low, you can get people. Human beings are available. So, you know, part of my, one of my dreams is to make a zombie movie in India because I can just keep bringing them, <laughs> keep them coming. And it's like, not only is it that people are available, backgrounds ve- available very easy. It's just nobody blinks. There's no whining. There's no groaning. If you ask for 500 extras on a TV show the next day to an AD, you're going to get eye rolls and and people just pissy you probably gonna get half of what you asked for and the I, attitude I've been that I just sag, sag members i know <laughs> yeah the attitude that comes with it i mean you ask for it in india it's done it's the the first word out of their mouth is done and um i'm telling you you know it's a big cultural advantage it's a big competitive advantage um the kind of uh you know i, I was rolling around delhi with the army of people my own crew was 250 300 deep you know everywhere i went and it wasn't a big deal. Like it was, it was not a thing. It was not a big deal. Any, any small location, anywhere we went. And um, I, I grew to love that about the, the, sh- the, the show. I will say when I started though, you know, these are small scenes we're shooting that I've normally shot with, up, you know, 10 to 15 people. I don't think you need more than that. And, and we're sitting around wondering like, what are all these 250 people doing here for a scene between Shefali, Sean, Rajesh, Talon, you know, having a cup of coffee like this isn't you don't need this uh this much crew but you know you own it after a while you know you feel like you know this is my set Nardeep, i have to request you to share the story you share at the screening of your movie in uh, in cinema yes because that that's where you touched me working in nyu working the theater please okay. do that <laughs> all right i'll share the story um i'll do it very quickly so i want to get some more questions too uh so we were very fortunate to premiere Land of Gold at the Tribeca Film Festival and the theater we filmed, uh, we screened at was the Village East Cinema. Um, uh, Tanuj, if you remember that. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, now owned by the Angelica. Now I went to school at NYU 
And my first job in the industry was wearing a lobster suit promoting the film Brooklyn Lobster outside of that theater in December, freezing my ass off wearing a lobster suit. Um, so I, I like to think that us screening our film in that same theater in like the 300 plus seat theater is like, it just shows that dreams can come true. Started um, from the bottom. Started literally from- in, a, in a lobster suit. Um, I, I think this question is, is really important. Um, Piranha, if you want to come on or I can do it really, really quickly. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll ask it really quickly because I think this is insightful. So Piranha is asking, Delhi crime is, a, is special because it centers uh, on a woman in a masculine force. And as a male director, did you have any apprehensions? Were you nervous? Uh, how did you decide to approach this as a man when you're telling a story about a strong woman? Well, uh, to be honest, I had no issues with that. I prefer those stories, to be honest. Um, I am very comfortable with um, female leads, uh, female-driven stories. Um, in fact, strangely, somehow I'm probably better at them. Um, I listen to Shefali quite a bit. Um, it comes from the ability to listen. Shefali um, knows her character inside out. And um, a lot of times it's just creating space for her, protecting her on set, making sure she has the room to perform and telling her, you know, really the directions often about, um, you know, things that we need to fix for the story, not about, you know, where she's taking the character and her performances. Um, I, I don't, I, I think, it's come, my, my comfortability with it has come from just a long history of doing, you know, making a lot of female driven shows, whether it's um, horror, comedy. Um, uh, I did a web series called Nice Girls Crew starring Sheetal Seth, uh, Lynn Chan and Michelle Kruzek. That was one of my first um, things after Punching at the Sun. And that experience taught me really what it meant to work with three strong, very, um, you know, insightful, brilliant, opinionated, Mm -hmm. um, you know, bossy women. And um, you have to learn how to listen and um, shut up. (laughs) I think that's, I I think you nailed it, right? Like on on Land of Gold, my majority of the people on set were women. And it's, it's kind of, you know, as, as men, I think it's important for us to, to make sure that we are giving ourselves the opportunity to have the other perspective and to be uh, let our work be um, uh, grow and let it be infused with the perspectives that matter. And, you know, I think that I, I love that um, you were insightful enough to know that and that you've, you know, been doing that your whole career. I think that's uh, a message to kind of keep to heart. Um, uh, sorry, guys, I'm, I'm going to kind of just ask these questions quickly, just because I know we're running out of time here. And I want to make sure that we answer as many as possible. Uh, 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 I think it was uh, Rohini. Rohini asked, uh, what is the director's relationship to the production designer and the uh, art department? Um, do you want to feel that one? Yeah, I mean, it's different for every director and every show. For me, um, I, I was really big on setting a color palette. You know, um, we worked really strongly with the color green. That's something that, um, I, you know, I, I just came up with it like, I remember Days of Being Wild reading an interview with Wong Kar Wai. This movie is about the color green. And I just took that. I was like, this is about the color green. And, you know, it sounds like a basic thing, but art, they need something like that to hold on to, to tie all of their decisions to. You just need a simple unifying thought for art, you know, and, and they can go with it. From that point, really, my, um, my DP has a big relationship with my um, art director, my art department. Um, a big thing we always look for is depth. We want a lot of depth in images. We want a lot of like light sources that are deep in the backgrounds. We want shears over windows. I mean, there's things that we know we want to do that gives us the best image. And my DP is generally the one when it comes time to shoot who has to be on the ground fighting for those things. And you know, we both know what we like, but he, he has to get those things moving because I'm working with the actors um, mm-hmm. typically. So most of my work with the art, art department comes um, prior to being on set because by the time we're on set, I need to focus on, on, on other things. Yeah, I think you nailed it. It's just really how involved does the director want to be? I know for Land of Gold, it was lots of conversation about color palette, texture, and and like show me show me options so I can be like yes, yes, no, and then like at a certain point you kind of get to that moment where like you're simpatico, and then you're like off to the races. Um, a question for you: uh, Did you was the DP on Delhi Crime season two someone you had worked with before? Uh, no, that was our first time um, working together, but 
it was just such a magical first conversation we had uh, when I interviewed him. I'd actually tried to offer. I tried to get a few other people on the job I had worked with before, and and Indian DPs as well. But um, yeah. David was uh, he'd done a film called Sony, a beautiful uh, cop female cop story in, in on Netflix as well, all handheld. So you know, actually, his work and background was was perfectly matched for our show, and his disposition was uh, unlike any other. It's very hard for someone just purely from the outside to come in and do it. And um, you know, talk about being an outsider. Me being an outsider, and I mean, that's nothing. David came in. You should have seen the the, the kind of love he got. Like they just love David Holland, and um, it's hard not to. Nice. Um, quick question from Rahul. Um, uh, do you plan to juggle more projects between the India and the U.S.? And quick question: Any chance a sequel for T, uh, uh, Chi and T? Oh, maybe that's I, maybe I'll maybe that's what my I might just start writing on. You know, I have my typewriter right here. Uh, maybe <laughs> I'll start um, typing that one right now. Um, good idea. Um, that that Chi and T is a lot of fun, you know, and uh, it's just a chance for. Um, a lot of friends to get together and work. Um, yeah, I'm going to work between India and the U.S. quite a bit. Um, there's there's beautiful opportunity there to make stuff. I might not make what everybody else makes uh, necessarily. Um, I would do a Bollywood film probably in a heartbeat. I would love to do that. Um, try and bring my style into that world. Um, um, there's plenty of TV shows out there too. But also, you know, Delhi Crime is a certain. It, it's it's when you do that, it's like there's a bar or standard, and it's it's almost hard to think of like what else to do in over there after that but um let's see how it comes let it let it, let it come to me um anish asks uh if you're given a, if you were given a billion dollars a billion holy shit that's a lot of money man a billion dollars to bring any story to life what story are you telling oh shit uh i think i would do something very intergalactic you know what I mean? I would do a story about moon life and about a colony on the moon and how earthlings are diverging into like a third species that are infused with technology and a natural evolution that happens. And maybe there's another one on Mars, you know, a colony on Mars. And so you would have um, a faction that's on Mars, faction on the moon, faction on Earth, and some kind of huge Game of Thrones as civil war happening between them. And I would love to shoot as much in anti-gravity and maybe even on the moon. All right. Okay. Unexpected. Dope. I want to be in that movie. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Um, let's take that to the next. Starring Nardeep. Was that? Starring Nardeep. Hey, I'll do it. I mean, I'll be in the movie. Uh, I'll get a breathing apparatus. Uh, <laughs> we, we can, I, I think we can hopefully can afford them in our budget. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I'll volunteer. I'll be the spaceship. <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, I've always thought that the satanic verses is unadaptable, but with a billion dollars, I think you could figure it out and maybe not get a fatwa against you. I maybe don't know. take the money and never put it out. Exactly, exactly. Okay, here's something interesting. Uh, after the successes of Delhi Crime Season 2 and Land of Goal, have you been able to pitch your own ideas to production companies and what kind of, how, what is this, what is the experience like pitching stories now that there is like some success, like larger success? Is, is this the Ritesh Rajan on the, in, in the, in the room? He, yeah, Ritesh is, is in here. Is that yeah. the Ritesh Rajan in the room? Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> he can answer that question. <laughs> what was that? He can answer that question. Oh, um, shit. What was my question? I forget. Uh, oh, like pitching. Yeah, you know, look, uh, having a little bit of success certainly helps get you in the room and it gives you a little bit of um, really what it is, is it makes people feel comfortable that you can handle a bigger job, whether that gets the thing made and whether they sign up for it is a whole different story. But I think it's just sort of like, at least this is my experience right now. It's it's just, there's just like, oh, OK, we trust this guy because he's done something. Now let's see what else it is. But then then it's kind of your square one. Like you're basically every project you're starting from square one. And it's just you have the projects behind you that give you the backing and the and the uh, um, there people will be comfortable with you actually like saying yes to you because of a track record. Um, but it really is like my experience is every project is square one because um, it's it's an individual thing. Yeah. And often it depends on what they're looking for as well. Um, it, it, it might not you might have an awesome show, but they already have um, something that looks like what you what you're pitching. Um, 
I think the, other, the, the thing that's kind of cool that's happening is that um, people are seeing the directing style of, uh, of uh, a Delhi crime too. And I'm getting offered, you know, maybe to direct an episode of a, of a, of a, of a, of a TV show that matches, you know, um, so it, it, that, that's, a, that's probably a, a, a better look right now. Yeah. Yeah. The other, th other thing to think about is like, there's like, you know, uh, we're all artists here. So it's like the challenge, I guess, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, Tony, you can jump on this too, but it's like, do you, you know, once you have a sample, a lot of times people want to pigeonhole you in that one thing. And I think what's something that's really impressive about your career and how you've built it is you've, you've been able to transition between so many different things and, and so brilliantly, and you just like soak it up. And I think that's like a trick of like, success is great, but they can, it can also be golden handcuffs because once someone thinks of you as something, then that's all they think of you. So there's like a little bit of tricky manipulation and navigating these spaces once you're, once you have access to them of like convincing people, Hey, I did that thing, but I can also do this thing because as an artist, I'm interested in that too. Um, so it's like, you know, it's totally. tricky to balance. Uh, ba -ba 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 let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, guys, at 6.15, I think I got to call it. I'm sorry. Uh, there are a lot of questions. I was trying to rapid fire them in here as much as possible. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, um, you know, reach out to us on social media um, and, and we can get to them and, and hopefully be able to do another one of these with Color Curves again. Um, uh, 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 thank you, Tanuj, for, for giving us your insight and your light today. Um, congratulations on all of the success. Uh, Deadly Crime Season 2 is like killing it. I, I feel like I can't turn on my computer without hearing about it, rightfully so. Ah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's if you guys haven't seen it, please see it. And also check out Tanuj's other work if you haven't seen it. I mean, dude's on Criterion. That's like a big deal as well. <laughs> so, you know, um, he's 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 trailblazing and, you know, a lot of us owe a lot to him in terms of what he's done uh, oh, in his man. career. So thank you. Um, um, and not, not the, thank you for creating such a warm, awesome space. Um, we'll, we'll be working together soon, I'm sure. I'm sure of that. We're going to yeah. Mars, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Piranha Vishesh, do you guys want to come on? Uh, just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, we really, really appreciate uh, everyone's time. Tanuj, Nadeep. Uh, I don't think I've heard a better conversation between filmmakers in a long time. And this is definitely something that a lot of us can learn from. So we really, really appreciate this. And, uh, you know, we hope to see you guys again soon. Nadeep will do a one-on-one -on -one with you as well. So you can give your insights on your project. And uh, Ritesh. Uh, if you want to come on and say hi to everyone because you've been there and uh, we know who you are, so it'd be great if you said hi. Come on, homie. Jump on. What's up, everybody? I was laughing. <laughs> you guys were cracking me up. This really was a very insightful and beautiful conversation. And and thank you again to everyone for hosting this and, and to Nuj and Nardeep. You guys are, you guys are heroes because it's you um, guys lead the ship and give us the opportunity to be in these stories and, and you guys are, are incredible storytellers and you know you're putting food on my table <laughs> hey. hey come on now so i hope that we all get to work together soon maybe i'll be on the moon with you guys <laughs> yes dude we should be you're, the, you're the leader of mars uh yeah. we already, we, we, you, you're, the mars, you're the mars yo low-key you know what you pitched you pitched gundam <laughs> is that what oh shit yeah. Are you an anime fan? Do you know Gundam? Yeah, I'm, I'm an anime guy, so I know what you're yeah. talking yeah. about. You know what? Yeah. That's kind of like Gundam. You should check out Gundam. I, 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 was, I was thinking it was a little bit um, Knights of Sidonia, a little bit, but yeah. you're right. Yeah. It, it's more Gundam. Dude, let's do it. That's where it all comes from. Robot fights. <laughs> we have a billion dollars. That's what we'll be spending on, other than giant robot fights. Let's do I it. mean, between your two contracts, man, we're never going <laughs> to... Uh, I don't know. If we'll, have, we'll probably have about... A, an independent film left after that. That's true. I do need those green M&Ms separated. <laughs> <laughs> we could all, uh, in pre-prod, you could create a new language. <laughs> exactly. There you go. And you don't need to worry about anything. <laughs> Just improv a new language. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today again. Thank you, Colicurs, for hosting this amazing event. Um, yeah. Keep making movies. Keep making stuff. And thank you again, Tanish.
Yeah, man, anytime. And um, uh, thank you, Color Cars. Thank you, Vishesh.